Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim we begin with Allah's blessed name we praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all our noble messengers on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from the city of Lahore in Pakistan on this the 18th day of the month of Shawwal with uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, we return to the subject of the great war which is coming we spoke on Turkey and the great war and the implications of Turkish continued Turkish membership in NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization how this affects preparations for the Great War we spoke of uh, um, Pakistan and the Great War a series of three videos and what should Pakistan do to prepare for the Great War but we did not spell out in detail we only gave you the wide contours but the details we kept it private that information we can we can share with you privately not publicly and then we uh, gave we we prepare we gave a lect another lecture on russia and the great war and uh, it would surprise our russian uh, speaking audience uh, in russia and elsewhere how much there is in the quran which is linked with russia not the name russia but of course with the orthodox christian world which is led by russia uh, and that that video was meant to alert the orthodox christian world of what does the quran have to say to you as you prepare for the great war and now we end with the last video uh, on Iran and the Great War and uh, our first observation is that Iran is so fortunate oh yes so fortunate our Prophet Allah's blessings be upon him had a companion who was Iranian uh, and his name was Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he is known as Salman Farsi or Farisi uh, because he belonged to the Iranian uh, nation and uh, or to the Iranian people rather than nation and uh, he, he, the Prophet والسلام, one day he remarked about Salman he said about his people he said that if wisdom were located up there in the stars his people will reach up to the stars to locate wisdom and so <laughs> this is a great compliment this is a great great compliment that Nabi Muhammad gave to the Iranian people the Farsi speaking people their wisdom and this is today manifested in the kind and the quality of the caliber of leadership that Iran has in the person of what is known as the Rahbar or the supreme leader of Iran Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei the two great leaders political leaders in the world today the two, the two who stand head and shoulders above all the rest of mankind are the leaders of Russia, post-Soviet Russia, the President Vladimir Putin and his, uh, his foreign minister, minister um, Sergei, Sergei and the leader of Iran Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei this is a man of great wisdom a mature political thinker a religious thinker and a man of wisdom 
And so Iran approaches the Great War with a wise leader. And that is a plus. That is something that Iran will benefit from. Iran as a consequence already has a very sensible and intelligent foreign policy. It is one in which it is clear the profile of Iran is as clear and plain as daylight. That it stands in resolute opposition to the oppressors of the world led by Washington. One could only wish that other parts of the world of Islam could have the inside, the foresight, the clarity of vision that Iran has. To recognize the Western world to be a, an oppressor and Washington to be the leader of the oppressors. And it was the, the founder of the modern state, the revolution in Iran, Ayatollah Ruhullah Khomeini who pointed his finger with matchless courage pointed his finger to Washington and declared this is Shaitanul Kabir, the great Satan and he was absolutely correct but the others don't have the kind of courage and integrity that Ayatollah Khomeini had and so Iran has a, pro a profile that is plain and clear as daylight. Iran is not sitting in any on any fence. And not only does Iran have this profile of resistance to the oppressor, but Iran for a long time now has recognized Russia as a friend. And has established progressively a close and abiding relationship with Russia. And so Iran is now well placed to prepare for the Great War. One wishes that Pakistan could have been similarly well placed in preparing for the Great War. The Great War, obviously, the Great War is obviously a war in which NATO and its satraps would be waging war on Russia and China because of their, their obsession of ruling the world and those, those who stand in their way who will not bend their knees in subjection to the Western rulership over the world they wage war on them and that's why they are lusting to wage war on Russia and China because China is proud as a civilization and China will not bend its knee to them. But the schoolboys can't understand that, so what can I do for them? And Russia is a proud civilization now. Russia is Orthodox Christian. Russia is no longer Communist and Soviet. Russia is now returning to her Orthodox Christian heart, her spiritual heart. And that spiritual heart, that Christian heart of Russia is such that it will never bend its knee to that bogus Christianity that is there in the West. And so Iran must be complimented for having the wisdom of building a strategic friendship and alliance with Russia. Iran has demonstrated even greater integrity in the recent war it was engineered by satanic forces who armed Azerbaijan not the people, the government of Azerbaijan satanic forces that's right with a capital S satanic forces who armed for many years, the government of Azerbaijan. I am not speaking ill of the people. I love the people of Azerbaijan, but their government is a different thing. And these satanic forces led by, you know who, Israel. That's right, Israel. Armed Azerbaijan 
provided the drones that they need to wage war in the modern age. And when Azerbaijan launched the war on Armenia and then lied, monstrously so, they lied and said, no, we didn't start the war, they started the war. What did Iran do? Although the people of Azerbaijan are Shia, and Iran is Shia, Iran had the integrity to stand by the side of Armenia in that war. So again and again you're seeing the correct foreign policy on the part of Iran, consistently correct. And so I Iran has won the love and affection of the Orthodox Christian world. I remember my next door neighbor, Venezuela, and Hugo Chavez in Venezuela with much less courage stood up to resist the Yankee oppressor. And, uh, and he paid the price for it as the president of Tanzania paid the price. And when he died, Hugo Chavez died. The only leader from the world of Islam who was there for that funeral of Hugo Chavez. A giant, a hero of a man who stood up to resist the oppressor. And when the Palestinians, when, the, when Gaza was being destroyed, it was Hugo Chavez who expelled the Iran Israeli ambassador. And when Hugo Chavez died, only Iran sent her president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, to attend the funeral of Hugo Chavez. Nobody else cared for Hugo Chavez except Iran. And when Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad went to the funeral, the old woman, the mother of Hugo Chavez came to him. And she was crying and she reached out to him. And guess what he did? Guess what Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad did? If he listens to this video, I think he would be very happy to hear. Ahmad, Mahmoud Ahmadi Dajjad put his arms around the old woman and hugged her in public. This is the wisdom of the Iranian leadership. When you have men like Sayyid Ali Khamenei and you have men like Mahmoud Ahmadi Najjad, then a country has great leaders. And so Iran is preparing with great wisdom for the great war consistently in its foreign policy, supporting Armenia against an Azerbaijan that was Shia, but which is the aggressor.